I feel like the hangover has changed us. You know what I mean? To kind of like feel a little bit like more anxious. Well, that's the hangover. More, that, that's the hangover. Yeah, like you've you yeah, changed. Like you're, you're, you're off. You're, yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. a little bit off and stuff like that. And some people haven't found like, you know, that thing. And exper- especially if you think about if you experience loss, right? Mm-hmm. If you experience uh, financial burden, if you experience, you know, you're grieving and then you got to go back out in the real world. Like, the whole world needs therapy. Yes. Now, got think about it because we all experience this this trauma. So we trauma. all are going to people. Saka Fed, welcome to Unfiltered Liming Podcast. Join us as we reflect on our personal journeys and share our insights, experiences, and stories. From food to music, language to customs, we explore what it means to straddle two cultures and find a sense of belonging in both. Whether you're a first-time generation Caribbean American, a seasoned veteran, or simply curious about the rich tapestries of cultures that make up the Caribbean diaspora. This podcast is for you. We are your host, Lisa, the Dominica Diva. Bertied, the Hasten Sensation. No one's talking, so let's get unfiltered. What up, B? What up, L? All right, let's go. Welcome back, d Liming crew. All right, thanks for joining us on another week, another episode. All right, so I know you're wondering get to the juicy stuff, what we're going to be talking about this week. This week, we're going to be talking about lingering shadows, the COVID hangover. Dum, 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 dum. Sorry, let me stop. Okay, so you asked, D-Line Recruit, what is the COVID hangover? All right? Mm-hmm. Listen, we've been through it. A lot of people were locked up in their houses. What, it was, it was for two years we were locked up? Or... Yeah. Yes. So yeah. some of the things we're going to talk about are what exactly is the COVID hangover? What entails with it? For example, I'll give you a few examples to get us started, right? We were in the house. We couldn't go anywhere. Then you got complacent being in the house. So it's isolation, mm-hmm. right? So you got used to being mm-hmm. alone. Now, when it's time to go back out, you might be dragging your feet to go back out, or you might be like, you know, this is a little yeah. comfortable. Mm-hmm. I really don't want to deal with people. You you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, Traffic. Exactly. The other thing also, too, if you might have been a person who is hustling, busting, going and ripping and running every day, you had the opportunity to slow down. It's kind of like that engine. You got to get that engine back up. So it might be a little Mm -hmm. slow to rev back up to go do those daily Mm -hmm. things that you were doing. All right. Yeah. So the other thing is socially. Right. Mm -hmm. Being social. I mean, we had to keep distance away, six feet away, not going out to public, large crowds and things like that. Um, Actually feeling like, you know, just skeptical, nervous. Your nerves were basically shook from going out. So then now with getting Mm -hmm. back out, you're just kind of a little apprehensive and taking your time and, you know, not jumping apprehensive, just being apprehensive, right? The other big piece to this, I feel like too- I feel like L though. I feel like L though. It's not not every part of the states feels that way because I was down here in the south, and they had a completely. <laughs> we gonna talk about that. I just want to make sure. Yes. Up north, y'all might have felt a lot of that, but down here in the south, I just thought they thought it was a whole big yes. spring and, break. Yes, and we'll right, and we'll ahead. and we're gonna get to that also too. But these are just a few mm-hmm. of the examples that we're gonna touch on. So like the first thing, for example, let's talk about the social impact and relations, right? So your mm-hmm. daily routines, getting together with your friends and family members, or even people that you might've had around that thought you thought were your friends, you found out very mm-hmm. quickly in COVID that they're not your friends. You found out very mm-hmm. quickly who they are, who they are right? So mm-hmm. um, we want to discuss make, the challenges of facing maintaining relationships. How do you mm-hmm. feel be during this time it was for you for maintaining relationships? Um, so this is the thing I'm gonna say. Maybe I'm a different kind of breed. I I spoke into a few people. I could take and leave social social relationships and impact with people. And I will explain myself. So for me, 
I'm one of those people I could be in a group and and I could also be by myself. So COVID for me was, again, a lot of people, there was a lot of bad things that happened. But COVID for me, I was like, okay, it took me like maybe it was more the fact that I had moved to a new place and work was kind of like in transition. That was the biggest thing. But then after I sat down and I was like, okay, I could work out. Okay, I could I, I could enjoy my peace. Okay, you're not a, no people are not gonna come. I don't have to go out. Oh my, I was one of those people. I, like when you call me, I could literally say COVID and get out of going out. <laughs> For me, I use that. And I have a girlfriend of mine, like we did go out and we take precaution, but it was just like for, with her, I couldn't use that. She was like, girl, bye. But for us, I'm like COVID. Like I, I I, have a dog. I used to go take my dog on walks and people, again, I'm in the South, so people didn't really understand the COVID thing. They wanted to do what they wanted to do. They There was not no hangover. I feel like maybe, maybe not over here, but they wanted to pet my dog. And I was just like, no, COVID. <laughs> like what's you do? step away so for me it was a little bit different but I would have to say the part about the relationship that did open my eyes to become okay with letting go of certain situations and relationships because then it was just like oh you ain't checking for me deuces you ain't calling me I'm I call people I checked on people. I wanted to keep in touch with people and they weren't doing the same thing. So I was like, oh, you don't care if I'm alive or not? Deuces. And I and I slept quite fine. So it helped me be okay. <laughs> we letting go of relationship. Maybe if it wasn't for COVID, I would have kept maybe trying a little bit more than I should. Does that make sense? And then with COVID, I was like, oh, so for me, I would say COVID, like how people have hangover, but COVID for me was, you know, how you re- was rehab for me. Like, you know, when you have an issue with alcohol and then you go to rehab and you do the steps, COVID for me was that. I was in my element. I was like, oh, step one, admit you got a problem. Step two, get rid of, like, I was like, no, you're sorry. the worst. You're the worst. Now, would it be, that would it Seriously, you said people weren't checking for you. What if they were depressed? If I'm calling you, and again, tread lightly. You, at least I'm somewhere with this, and I'm going to go right there. She opened the door, so I'm going to walk right through it. All right? See that, me crew? If you've been rocking with us season one, you know how this podcast got started, right? We were checking oh, for people, shit. getting on calls, right? So my thing is, if the effort was put to check for you. We all were going through stuff and you weren't putting in the work. I couldn't, I couldn't help you. So even if you, if you are depressed, if I'm actually activing, actively calling and checking for you, because I might have been going through some stuff too, but Mm -hmm. I put in the effort to step out of myself to Mm -hmm. do, to, to take that effort. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't like you were not picking up and I understand like some people were going through stuff, but that was the whole point of if the person was actually picking up the phone and checking for you and you just stop communicating, there's nothing that I could do at that okay. point. You understand what I'm saying? No, I fair couldn't enough. drive. To play. I couldn't. First of all, no, I wasn't about to do all of that because you were damn, you were fine. You just okay. selected to eat. Yeah, you they were fine because I mean they, they they were going nope. to jobs. Not tell people. I'm just saying. Nope. You're right. You're right. Yes. So if you're, you're hearing from right. other people, you understand what I'm saying. If you're hearing from other people that that person was okay, if the person was not okay, nobody else in your group or circle that you knew didn't hear from that person. I could understand that. But if you're hearing okay. from other people like yo this and that, well, no, is- no, you're absolutely correct. You're absolutely what about correct. You? Yes, but it just it it definitely showed the true colors of friendships. It definitely yeah. did, you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. there were some people that might have been checking up on you that you might not have even heard from in a long mm-hmm. time. So mm-hmm. yeah, so that was yeah. So moving forward, I think the lesson that I would love 
for people to have learned out of this COVID hangout is to continue to reach out, continue to check mm-hmm. on. Because as we yeah. slowly get back into, or some people fast, well, depending on what part of the country we're mm-hmm. talking about, because yeah. there's some parts yeah. that did not miss a beat. They like COVID what and COVID who, okay? Um, <clears throat> guilty. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Girl. Nah. That was a whole, I would say that was a whole experience too. Speaking of the hangover, I think that whole like as we talk about the hangover in the sense of what truly a hangover is, is like people trying to figure out like, you know, again, goes with our season, what's next, right? Because mm-hmm. that's the whole thing of the season is what's next. So the hangover also like had to get like, so when you wake up, like Lisa said, from a hangover, you're like, oh shit, what's next? I got to get myself together. You're slow. You kind of like, you know, on the fence and all this other stuff. So I just think, yeah. On the fence? Like, Have you had a hangover before? Yeah. You gonna put me on the spot? No, I have not. You're one of the I've fortunate ones. People. Yeah, I'm You're so sorry. Fortunate. I have not. We're not you about to either. apologize. Not, you do not have yeah, to apologize. We're not about for to have, it. No. But I feel like what I was saying is like the 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 reason I was going with the sense of where you live is because, like, let's say if you lived in New York, you have a different sense of hangover. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So certain Mm -hmm. hot spots, I think, have a different sense of what the hangover is in their community because they saw so many people pass away. Right. Like maybe even though where I was, people did pass away, but not at the capacity like, let's say, in New York, where some of the hot spots were. So I think the complete sense of what their hangover is, is different than, let's say, like where I lived, you know, in the South or certain places where it wasn't as impactful as seeing the number that they did, yeah. with, you know, yeah, with, yeah, because you know, yeah, people... part of because, you know, you explained your knowledge on a hangover, but part of it is getting your balance. My reading. Huh? My reading and my movie critic. Huh? Yeah. So. For those of us who understand what a true hangover is, it's like you're getting your balance, right? You're getting your equilibrium back. You're feeling a mm-hmm. little foggy, right? You don't mm-hmm. exactly see clear. So, you know, getting back, because now we've fallen into this slumber where we're out with ourselves and isolation. Mm-hmm. So it's just getting your feet, you know, your sea legs, mm-hmm. you know, getting mm-hmm. back out there. So one of the other big things too is the economic challenge for this. Um, mm-hmm. cause they're always talking about the unemployment numbers. Um, mm-hmm. employers are having a hard time finding people. And a lot of people are like, where did, you know, nobody wants to come to work. Nobody wants to do anything. But mm-hmm. I keep saying for me, mm-hmm. yes, that might be true. I think it's two parts. The first part for me, and this is just my personal opinion, um, looking at some data, a lot of people were able to sit still, reevaluate their lives and reevaluate their time in their lives and say, what is important to me, right? And then then by saying like, hey, maybe I don't want to work this much. And there was a lot of people that were like, hey, I'm going to start my own business. They might have had, they wanted to do it. They were working on it little by little, but now you have the full blown opportunity. And also too, with social media, you're able to reach a lot of people because everybody's home online. So that's one piece of it. The other piece that I feel like no one really talks about is that a lot of people died. I think that's the piece people keep forgetting. So if you go to work and you're at a job prior to COVID and then during COVID, you find out that's 10 people at your job passed away. That's 10 positions you got to refill. And I feel like they keep talking about the unemployment rate. Nobody wants to work. Everybody's lazy, blah, blah, blah. Eh, I'm going to say 50-50. 50-50, Mother Hudgies died, okay? Number two, people will now have the opportunity to do their own thing. And they had the freedom to do their own thing. Because you mentioned, I agree with you, people did pass away. and that did leave a because it was millions right it's it was, millions it's millions, millions of people, people passed and i'm like nobody talks about yeah. like maybe that's why you also can't find people 
Yeah. And it didn't matter sex, gender, no. you know, economics, socioeconomic, mm-hmm. where you mm-hmm. were at. You could have had money, not have money, and all this other stuff. So yeah, I agree with you. That that has um and I don't think that's ever going to come back the way that people feel like it's going to come back. You know what I mean? It's so going to have to take a, a whole decade, a whole generation. Mm-hmm. To get the, and then, like you said, I also do agree. COVID um, helped people become more independent to not, tr- not I wouldn't say not trust, but not depend on a job because they saw that, hey, anything could happen in certain industry. Mm -hmm. So it helped people see like, oh my gosh, I don't want to put my my egg all in this basket. So I'm going to do my own thing. Like you said, that's why a lot of entrepreneurs, you know, develop. That's why you had a lot of small, uh, a ticking up the small businesses and all of that. And then people reevaluated what they wanted to do, what was important to them. You know what I mean? Whether it was their family or not, or some people just completely... They learn something new. And let's say they were in this career, because I know in hospitality, a lot of people were like, oh, that could happen and went to a different career. Like they yep. selected to do a different career path. So a lot of cha- things in, um, affected that. I know financial hardship, yes, was a big thing. I, I would use my personal, you know, my personal self, like for six months, it was like, oh, shoot, I went through my savings because I was waiting for, again, the beginning. Nobody knew what was going to happen, right? So you're sitting there thinking, okay, I don't want to get a new job. And if something happens and it goes back, you know, so you were like in that, what should I do and all this other stuff. So I got a temporary job and I was telling myself, I went to work at Walmart. You got to do what you got to do, but I got a degree out of it. You understand what I'm saying? So, but the money I was making no offense, Walmart, the money y'all were paying was not comparable. So there was a lot of sacrificing to thank God. But yeah, so I'm now to the point where I'm rebuilding my finance. So I would say that's a hangover, slowly yeah. but surely. Yeah, that's I'm part saying. of the I hangover. To, have, that's exactly. I have to rebuild yeah. my finances to where I was. I had a mm-hmm. goal. I was I was doing good on my goal, doing on my savings, being responsible. And mm-hmm. then with COVID... So guess what? You got to. So, yeah, that's a big. And I think one of the things that I would say I'm realizing is with a lot of the companies out there doing COVID, people had grace. But then as soon as, you know, the state, I don't know, because when you're in this hangover, you're trying to find your balance. Right. But then the country, for some odd reason, the economic power at bees, I don't think that they 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 went through that hangover. The people are going through a hangover, but these economic powerhouse want their money. You understand Mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just like, it's just like you're going through a hangover, right? And you're trying to get your balance, but then you have the group of people that are like, oh no, come and hang out. Here's some more alcohol. Come and hang out, right? They keep you in that constant state of, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like once the country was like, oh, we're open. We want to get back to, you know, putting people back in jobs, get the economy back. We want to, you know, whatever. They forgot to be gracious in understanding that people needed to rebuild. And I think that also is keeping some people in financial hangover Mm -hmm. because it's like, you were giving me grace. Now, all of a sudden, now everything is due. There's no compassion. There's no, oh, extension. There's yeah. nothing. So I think that also is not helping while people are going through this hangover. They got this headache because they're trying to find their equilibrium. But you over here, like, I don't care. I'm not offering you no help no more. There's like no AA available, like whatever they call it when you're trying to do a hangover, sleep it off, whatever you need to do. They're like, no. Nope. <laughs> Did you say whatever Whatever. you're trying to do to get over a hangover? Yeah, whatever you need to do to get the hangover, to get back onto where you yourself. You understand what I'm saying? I just feel like they're like, yo, you're on your own. No No. help over here. Yeah, yeah, you're right. But that's an important piece that you said is that they didn't allow grace because it does take time Mm -hmm. to get back up and running. That's one thing. You remember, like you said, two years, people died. Yeah. And you open up the country like yesterday and you want everything to be back up. You can't do that. I feel like you should be giving me two years too. You yeah. closed the country for two years. And 92 all this other years stuff to get back together. To, 
I need two years to get it together. Two years. Yep. And continue to give us stimulus packages. I'm just kidding. Oh, gosh. Yes. And then let's talk about the people that are um, dating, the single, oh. getting back out there. I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know if it made it worse or not because I was just like, yo, I can't. Mm-hmm. I feel like. Where do we start with the dating and getting back out their relationship? Because a lot of people, I feel like the hangover. So you 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 know how they say when you drink and you become beside yourself. That's what they say. I don't know. You need to tell me, Lisa, because you know I ain't, and that the liquids the they call it the it's um, called liquid truth, truth liquid liquid truth. Okay, liquid truth. So I feel like the hangover was that. Because it helped people see, like you said, what true friendship worth, what true relationships relationship worth. So that's why there was a lot of divorces during COVID because people had to figure out, oh, you can't oh. hide, right? Because because when you when you were working and being busy, you were able to let go and not see a lot of stuff. But y'all got stuck in the house. And you could not, so that liquid spirit were helping you see a bunch of stuff, right? That, you well, were waking the, up with like, well, oh, sh- well, actually, <laughs> no, actually, it wouldn't be the liquid, the liquid courage. Okay, wait, let, let's back up for a minute. So it actually, the hangover would be the reality after you get a divorce and realize that you yes. have to now survive on your own, right? But it's yep. the COVID that actually people realized that had to come home, married couples and in relationships in general, like they, there's a lot of people realize they didn't like each other. Yeah. They, they didn't so like, like each other because yeah. it's Cause a different, like the same thing with the dating. Yeah. Like yeah. people, yeah. People went out there and people were more like, you were asking more questions that pit probably if you were not, you know, doing the hangover, you wouldn't have realized. Right. That's people, true. I think, you know what I mean? Like you were mm-hmm. able to maybe dive deeper into who are you? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like not waste your time. Cause I know a couple of people that, you know, they they try the online thing and they were quicker to dismiss certain things than mm-hmm. maybe if they weren't. Like it took yeah. it took less time to filter through BS, basically. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Exactly. But then on the other hand, I feel like because people were going through the hangover and they were trying to find the balance, I feel like some people did put up with the shenanigans so they wouldn't be alone. Because I know some people oh, that they said they yeah. started dating not to be, they didn't want to go through the hangover by themselves. That's true. I think some people you did get together because they didn't want to go through it alone. So therefore, then when we get back out and they just going about their business, that's the hangover because now they mm-hmm. out. They like, oh, mm-hmm. hold up. I got my yeah. sea legs. I'm, I could be back. I don't have to be stuck with you. Mm-hmm. Just hopefully they didn't make no babies in the middle of that or whatever. Well, let's hope. Yeah. But yeah, the hangover dating thing, I think with or without, did it impact it? Yes. But I feel like when it comes to relationship and people, people are difficult anyway with mm-hmm. the hangover without us. Yes, basically. Yeah, basically. So what lessons <laughs> do you think that people learned? I think we talked about it. Like, I think like you mentioned, like people, I feel like there were different groups of people, right? Mm -hmm. There were people that were angry because they didn't understand why they was, this was happening. Right. I feel like there were people that were like, oh, this is not real. You know, they were a different type of leadership. So there was like, either you were far right or far left. They were people that I feel realized that they were not in, invincible you know what I mean mm-hmm. like like you could have the money in the world you could have and then this thing could come around and you're gone so I think mm-hmm. there was that sense of people appreciating life a little bit yeah. more but I mm-hmm. do feel I don't know if during the hangover time because people some people learn these lessons but then when the world, I feel, in my opinion, disclaimer, always my perspective, people, when the world, I feel, opened back up, I feel like people are, that I've experienced sometimes are angrier. Like, I don't oh, yeah. know if it's all the pent up 
pent up, like I don't know, I'm putting that accent in pent up um stuff y'all had going on. But yeah. I feel like I experienced like little things that might not bother them before. Now again, because when hospitality, I feel like people are just some people are nastier. Some yes. people are more entitled. Yes. Some people just feel like they deserve what they deserve. Like you don't give me what I want. Like, I don't know. It's changed. I feel like the hangover has changed us. You know what I mean? To kind of like feel a little bit like more anxious. Well, that's the hangover. More, that, that's the hangover. Yeah, like. You've, you've yeah, changed. Like you, you're you, off. Yeah. Yeah. You're yeah. a little bit off and stuff like that. And some people haven't found like, you know, that thing. And exper- especially if you think about. If you experience loss, right? Mm -hmm. If you experience uh, financial burden, if you experience, you know, you're grieving and then you got to go back out in the real world. Like the whole world needs therapy. Yes. Now, God, think about it because we all experience this, this trauma. PTSD. Is that, is it post-traumatic? Yeah. Post-stress. What is it? Post-stress Post-traumatic post-traumatic yeah. syndrome yeah yeah so I mm-hmm. feel like I feel like I'm experiencing people but maybe have not because during COVID I learned how to center myself I learned how to let go of things you know what I mean so I found my path during COVID to not let this get me you know what I'm saying where I mm-hmm. can find my balance I didn't watch a lot of the news cycle, um, like some of my, some people that I knew watched it a lot. And I think fig- I found out that the people that were watching it every day, constantly, they were like, yo, like constantly I could, I watch like the basics of it to know what was going on in my state. But every day I didn't watch it because the fear, there was like a lot of fear from the news cycle and all of this other stuff. So I think, um, Everybody learned different lessons mm-hmm. that impacted them, either for good mm-hmm. or for bad. But mm-hmm. you tell me, mm-hmm. um, what lesson did you learn? I definitely, for me, I, wow, I learned to sit still. It's okay to sit mm-hmm. still. I learned, I actually embraced the quietness and the stillness. Mm-hmm. I would. I personally was grateful for it. So it stirred me, it gave mm-hmm. me an opportunity to rethink about what I want to do. I, it mm-hmm. got, it allowed me to have the opportunity to be more creative. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> the creative juices were going, things that I might've wanted to always do. Now I like take the opportunity to explore. I also too had this phase, like a uh, uh, overwhelming urge to just learn everything. What, what else is there new to learn? You know, mm-hmm. I just have an overwhelming, like, I just wanted to, I was just like, I need to learn everything. And it just, and it felt mm-hmm. good. It felt good. Mm-hmm. Um, So that was. um so Because you weren't stressed about work? No, Mm-mm. no. And I could think, mm-hmm. I felt like I was clear and I could think. So, mm-hmm. um, but also too, I want people also to um, realize there were a lot of there there was a lot of people affected by covid but there was a lot of people who were not mm-hmm. they didn't lose their job mm-hmm. they didn't have financial hardship mm-hmm. they did not lose any family members and i need those people to have grace for those who did because that's something that i've seen also too that people are on this high horse too like they weren't affected you know, and they looking at you like, what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. You know what yeah. I'm saying? They not, they are oblivious. When mm-hmm. I tell you, I know people who right now in my life who are freaking oblivious because they were mm-hmm. not affected. Mm-hmm. So that in itself yeah. to me, that's a huge learning. Like I need people to yeah. stop and take, be a little, be grateful but also allow people mm-hmm. grace and have some compassion mm-hmm. and empathy. Okay. And be grateful mm-hmm. that you didn't lose. You weren't phased. Nothing happened to you. Yeah. 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 You exactly. weren't. I agree with you. And there are, like you said, there are some people that they were still having to work because then you think about, 
like you said, the ones that were not infected and they they had positive in their life. But then you think about like nurses, right, that were going to work and were impacted. That also, you know what I mean, impacted Mm -hmm. them, even certain places in hospitality that were still working and dealing and having to worry about oh my, you know, still cleaning up after people like the, 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 they were, what did they call them? The, um, what they call them? The frontline workers. Yeah. The frontline, you know workers, what I mean? Yeah. They were mm-hmm. still frontline workers. So imagine like, you know, people that were still picking up your trash and doing things and not mm-hmm. knowing of whether they were nurses, doctors that were not knowing how, if they were going to be infected, you know, mm-hmm. affected by this and taking it home to their families and all mm-hmm. this other stuff. So even if you weren't impacted in the pot in the wrong way, I feel like those people too have a hangover because they had to be front line, you know what I mean? And things they like that. Tragedy so that was all front. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, yeah, I agree with you. There's, there are some people that we all took lessons. We all took, and we all experienced it, whether whichever way you want to think about it, whether you've ever been drunk or not, we all have this, hangover because we all experience it individually but yet together you know what I mean so Mm -hmm. there definitely are institution out there that you know resources to be able to deal with whatever you're going through you know what I mean like resources to talk about it because again as much as we could say oh well it's no longer COVID is still a real thing it -hmm. doesn't impact people as it it used to but it's still a good thing but again you got to remember for two years the whole world. It wasn't like this was just a small part of the country mm-hmm. or what it was the whole world mm-hmm. dealing with this. So that's something that's going to connect us forever resources out there for people. Yeah. For people to actually go through dealing with whether, whether you had lost, you know what I'm saying? Financial burden, whatever it is, you, you need to seek out the help mentally mm-hmm. that you need to be able to deal with this hangover and finding your balance and finding your support system Mm -hmm. to help you navigate and talk about it. And again, this is why the unfiltered lie name is here. We'll be more than happy to listen to you. Have you come on and talk about it and tell us how you were able to find your balance, you know, because I know with hangover, Lisa be making fun of me, but I do see people with hangover, they be making these concoctions, to, you know, to help them. So if you, if there was some concoction that you that. made to help you, you know, like they make those weird drinks sometimes to be like, oh, drink this. You know what I mean? Like, no. I don't know. In the Caribbean. I don't, I don't know what channel that was on. The Caribbean. That channel. You said- well, you, I see it in the movie. Oh. <laughs> Girl, it's when probably a hottie oh, drink this. It's probably a hot toddy. Another drink to get you equally, equally you out. That's probably what it is. It's really valid. Yeah. What about Caribbean? What about our Caribbean folks? How do you think that they deal with this hangover? Do they think that the Caribbean deal with hangover as like this COVID I, I hangover? Think, I think a lot of the Caribbean, first of all, did an excellent job with not letting it spread to the whole island Mm -hmm. compared to the way it spread in other countries. I think they did a very good job. They were very strict about who came in and out of their countries. Um, Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they did a good job with that for the most part. I'm not going to say all islands. I'm going to say majority of them did an excellent job with protecting their people. dangerous. I I have to say, I heard stories and my Haitian people don't come after me. Disclaimer, this is stories. It was on the news. I don't know how true it is. Again, if it's not true, my bad. But if it is, oh, well. But I heard that there will be like certain places in Haiti. If people in the neighborhood find out that you had it, you would need to not tell people. They were like, yo, they wanted to get rid of you. And the like, if they find out. Yeah, like some places were because they were like, yo, this is not going to spread. They were being very, like you said, strict, but it was dangerous for some people. Yeah. Like they had to, yo, sit your behind somewhere, you mm-hmm. know, quarantine yourself. Don't mm-hmm. be coming out here and, you know, like don't wear mm-hmm. a mask when you know you're supposed to be indoors. So I like going back to the being strict. They were making sure like if you have it, do what you need to do to not spread it also because people are not going to put up with like if you you hear you have it and you walking around and all this stuff and you know you have it and all your no don't do that 
No, yeah, so I exactly. Think that, yeah, exactly. Yeah, but this was a great. This is a great conversation. So now, uh, D Lyman crew, B has a full understanding of what a hangover is. Yes, right. I do. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Did you have anything we're gonna, else? We're to gonna add? also put a link. We're gonna put a link that uh-huh. we found from um, a resource for you guys. That's gonna be you know, our tip from the HP, HMP Global Learning Network that talks mm-hmm. about the different things that we mentioned on here mm-hmm. about the COVID hangover, like social distancing and different things like that, that you guys can read on. And if you have any other good resources that people can use, again, we're here to help. Um, if you are an expert that you want to come, um, you know, Caribbean or American, want to talk and share with the people about how they can handle um, you know, the mental part of this, the physical, the financial, any part of this hangover to help them, you know, get to the other side or able to, you know, um, deal with grief, um, with the loss. We're more than welcome to come on. Um, reach out to us. We'll be more than happy to have you. But yeah. All right. Mm-hmm. All right. Till the next episode. Thank you for joining us this week. V? Yes. And tell them what to do. We'll have something here, right? Yeah, something. Somewhere around here. Thank you for tuning into this week's episode of the Unfiltered Lyman Podcast. We hope you enjoyed the conversation and gained some valuable insight. Don't forget to subscribe to the show so you can catch every new episode and leave us a review so we can continue to bring you fresh, exciting content. And if you have a topic you'd like us to discuss or a story you'd like to share, please reach out to us via our website. Join us again next Thursday for another unfiltered conversation about the rich diversity and complexity of the Caribbean American experience. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning, and keep celebrating the unique cultural heritage that makes us who we are. Unfiltered Lyman is edited and produced by Unfiltered Lyman.